In the wizardly world of Harry Potter, you'll find all sorts of magical, surprising characters. But they're not just any regular faces, of course. These portrayals come from mega famous actors who manage to blend into the background completely unnoticed. If you ask any British actor to name a film franchise they've starred in, chances are they'll say Harry Potter. Whether it was a small extra role or a leading part, the series seems to be on a mission to incorporate its entire country of actors into its scenes over the course of its eight movies. This can be said even if the actors weren't actually speaking. As a matter of fact, the majority of the Harry Potter stars can be spotted just chilling in the depths of the film. Ranging from ministry officials to literal Hogwarts students, their world of wizards is made up of endless characters. Taking our 10th spot is Julianne Hough. Long before Julianne was a world renowned dancer and judge on Dancing with the Stars, she played a nameless Gryffindor student during Harry's first year at Hogwarts. Julianne was said to have been recruited for Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone from her school of performing arts based in London. In the film, she can be briefly spotted on screen while a Quidditch match is going on, and then again during a deleted Christmas scene. Despite the actress not having a major piece of screen time with Daniel Radcliffe, who played the movie's title character, Julianne did formally recall with People that she had sent the boy who lived actor a love note and a beanie baby. However, reports claim Daniel ignored it. From her younger days to now, Julianne is almost unrecognizable, however not nearly as much as when she starred as Sandy in 2016 for Grease Live. If you're a Harry Potter enjoyer, smash that like button now! Taking our ninth spot is Derek Huff. His younger sister wasn't the only Huff to grace the halls of Hogwarts. In fact, Derek also made a quick appearance in the first film of the franchise. Rather than a Gryffindor though, Derek was a Ravenclaw student. His minor on screen take is filmed during a festival scene, and his moment to shine comes in the form of him strolling behind Emma Watson, who played Hermione, as her character is preparing to go home for the holidays. This wasn't the actor's only role for the HP film, however, as he formally revealed to EW that he would also stand in for Draco Malfoy. Freud, as his hair was equally as blonde at the time. Just like Julianne, Derek also moved into competing on Dancing with the Stars and took home the Mirabal Trophy a total of six times. Most recently, Derek serves as a World of Dance judge for NBC alongside other panelists Neil and Jennifer Lopez and their mentor slash host Jenna Dewan. Derek was also hired to play Corny Collins in Hairspray Live. Taking our eighth spot is Jessie Nelson. Jessie is mainly famous due to her former addition of being a part of the popular UK girl group Little Mix, as well as her budding solo career in the pop genre. However, when she was just a teenager, Jessie was portraying another unnamed Hogwarts student. The singer has starred in a variety of films which range from about a boy to the iconic Harry Potter franchise itself, so if you're ever sad about her leaving Little Mix, just remember that you can watch her on the screen working her movie magic at any time. Jessie's departure from her former group of 9 years was solely due to her need to focus on her mental health, and her previous band members and fans have all flooded her with support and love since. However, there was a simpler time before her girl group takeover when she was just an extra in the HP franchise. And you can imagine how stupefied fans felt when they first found out that Jessie was an actual extra in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Speaking about her time on the film, Jessie did a chit chat appearance for an Australian radio presenter when he had questioned her about the then rumors surrounding her in one of the greatest film franchises in cinema history. In response, Jessie kind of brushed it off like it's an everyday ordeal to share sets and screen time with Emma Watson and Daniel Radcliffe. Taking our seventh spot is Reggae Jean Page. After Bridgerton made his 2020 debut, Reggae, alongside his infamously memed Spoon, was suddenly dubbed Netflix's new It Boy overnight. But before he was hired to portray the world's favorite dashing duke, Simon Bassett, the actor previously laced up his best wizarding gear to take part in a Weasley wedding. In a scene for the Deathly Hollows Part 1, Reggae is shot standing behind Hermione when Bill and Fleur's wedding is crashed by Kingsley Shacklebolt. Despite the fact that Reggae's work went uncredited and he didn't have the opportunity to do more than mood stare, the few seconds he was on screen became a fun easter egg for Bridgerton fans digging into his past work. He has surely come quite a long way. From one fantasy X show to a governed romance series, Reggae has proven he is a fully versatile being and also fully capable of sticking to his acting roots. Taking our sixth spot is Ben Shepherd. Ben is undoubtedly a primetime TV legend, as the majority of Brits will surely recognize his time taking over their screens throughout the years. Ben has co-hosted numerous shows including Ninja Warrior, Good Morning Britain, and GMTV. However, However, what some of the locals may not know is that Ben is a lot less recognized for his brief pop up in a magical scene which was filmed for the Half-Blood Prince movie. His portrayal was listed as Diagon Alley Father and he has a momentary blurry feature in the background shots for Weasley's Wizards Wheezes. Ben was dressed up like a younger version of Cyrus Black who was Harry's godfather. Since his time in the 8th Harry Potter movie, Ben moved on to presenting for the Champions League and the League Cup for Sky Sports. Nowadays though, Ben typically only does goals on Sunday for them. Ben also presents Tipping Point on IT 
GMTV and made a recent GMTV return under the name Good Morning Britain, as mentioned prior. Taking our fifth spot is Domino Gleason. Domino is likely most remembered for his flaming red hair and portrayal as Ron Weasley's older brother Bill in both Deathly Hollow films. His addition to Star Wars The Last Jedi as General Hux also brought Domino mass recognition, and he is one of the most admired Irish actors of his generation. His resume is legendary with some of his other movie appearances including being in parts of Peter Rabbit and Goodbye Christopher Robin. For shows, Domino has taken roles in Run, Your Bad Self, and The Last Furlong to name a few. Taking our fourth spot is Alfred Eno. Alfred is another Harry Potter actor who has been detailed as coming a great way since his time in the film. Alfred starred in a few blow up shows over the years, one in particular being his part as a law student named Wes Gibbons on ABC's How to Get Away with Murder. For others, he's appeared in BBC America's Sherlock, Troy, Fall of a City, and Trust Me. Since his rise to fame in the HP franchise playing Dean Thomas, there isn't one person who doubts Alfred's success as a Hollywood actor. His particularly important part was featured in the franchise's sixth movie, Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. From snatching a main role in ABC's crime drama mystery series to appearing in the highly anticipated sci fi show Foundation, Alfred has proven he did just what he needed to do in order to become more than just a Harry Potter side character. Taking our third spot is Scarlet Burn. Scarlet's time in both part of the Deathly Hollows and Half Blood Prince movies once involved her keeping Tom Felton's fellow Slytherin character, Draco Malfoy Company, playing the sour pansy Parkinson. Since this, Scarlet has dived even deeper into the fantasy show world as, as Nora Hildegard on CW's late 2000s series, The Vampire Diaries. It's been reported that she gained a surprisingly unlikely fan through her breakout role, and five years of nonstop chasing eventually led to marriage. Despite Scarlet's role being relatively smaller and only a consistent presence in the last three films, her addition to the Harry Harry Potter movies still remains a lasting portrayal for fans. Apparently, supporters even became obsessed with who she was married to in 2020. In that same year, Scarlett conceived her daughter Betsy Rose alongside her husband Cooper Hefner, known mainly for being Hugh Hefner's son. After Harry Potter and Outside of the Vampire Diaries series, Scarlett was photographed for Playboy, was cast in Lake Placid the final chapter as Brittany, and became a regular member of the Falling Skies cast. Taking our second spot is Luke Youngblood. Luke was a fellow pal of Harry and other Gryffindors in the franchise, but fans of the show community will best recognize recognize Luke from his critically acclaimed recurring part as magnitude in the first, second, fourth, and fifth seasons. In addition to his portrayal in Harry Potter, Luke also took on minor parts in Glee and Lied to Me. In 2015, Luke was cast in ABC's Gallivant sitcom as Sid. Luke has starred in several other theater productions as well. For the West End musical Oliver, Luke was cast to play Nipper, and this was under the direction of the Oscar-winning Sam Mendes with production by Cameron McIntosh. Furthermore, Luke spent time in The Fair Ladies at a Game of Poem with John Crowley. This was out of the National Theatre prior to Luke's casting as the lead character in the original London cast, award-winning Julie Tamer directed The Lion King. One of Luke's most notable roles, however, was playing Ben for CCB's The Story of Tracy Beaker. His best friend portrayal resulted in a Children's BAFTA Award for Best Children's Drama for four consecutive years. Taking our first spot is Ian Brown. Ian wouldn't be the first famous band member to slip into the wizarding world, but he's one of the most notable. The former Stone Roses frontman once made a fairly strong cameo in Prisoner of Oscar Kavan, seated in Diagon Alley's most frequented pub, the Leaky Cauldron, not very long before Harry arrives at the location. His brief pop-up is genius, really, with Ian's character magically stirring a spoon into his drink in one hand, while he holds a copy of Stephen Hawking's A Brief History in Time in the other. This was meant to reference the audience market of anyone from the magic-free world. According to a Quora user responding to why does Ian Brown make a cameo in the third Harry Potter film, the original poster had a rather interesting response. They said Ian Brown makes a cameo in Harry Potter Potter and the prisoner of Azkaban because he is a friend of the director of the movie, Alfonso Cuadron. Thus, we see him stirring his cup of tea while reading a brief history in time. That's been today's WATN. Thanks for watching, friends.